St. Luke tells us that Jesus told this parable to prepare us always to pray and to not lose heart. He's talking about persistent prayer, constant and steady prayer, because he knows that the realities of this life can wear us down and make us inclined to give up prayer and even the faith. And he's warning us not to ever, ever give it up, but most especially when we become tired and fatigued. His point is that God cares about us and is listening to us, whether we think so or not. Jesus is concerned that when circumstances around us go bad, when we're surrounded by evil or we're suffering or life just never seems to go our way, we can begin to get tired and discouraged, maybe to the point of despair. And he's warning us not to let those things get us down. And notice that his last comment is this, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? Well, he's talking about the end of time when he returns and gathers all the members of his flock. And he's clearly concerned that we do not lose hope, that despite all the events of our days that distract us and rattle us and lead us to feelings of doom and gloom and depression and all that stuff, that we may give in to them and give up. And that's because God cares for us and hears us, regardless of what we think. Now, most if not all of us experience this kind of thing from time to time. Most of us have lived through COVID, for example, and most of us had to struggle through lockdown and separation from others or even isolation, and it was not pleasant. I can think of many occasions when folks might be moved to feelings of despair and giving up. Right now, there's a war going on in Ukraine, and I can imagine what kind of toll that is taking on either side. And I can imagine people thinking to themselves, what good is it to pray? Why bother with it? Something like that seems to be happening at times in this country, but without the hot warfare and regardless of whatever side you might be on. I hear about it frequently, and I know that it's making people tired and weary. And it's for those kinds of times and circumstances and many, many, many more that Jesus is warning us to not lose hope. And that's because he foresees those times when we will be sorely tempted to just throw it all away. He knows difficult, difficult times will happen because they happened to him. He knows that what he wants for us is not always what we want for us, for ourselves. And he also knows that we perceive time in a manner that is quite different from the way God perceives it. So here's a question for you. How often do you pray for something over and over and over and God does not seem to give an answer to your prayers? Yeah? Common, common problem. Speaking for myself, I've been praying for conversions of family and friends for well over 30 years. And guess what? Not a single conversion at least not yet, but that hasn't stopped me from continuing to pray for them and I'm not going to stop. And I'll, I tell those who have asked me to pray for their family members or friends that they shouldn't stop either. Of course, our ability to pray becomes particularly difficult, especially during times of great stress, distress or evil. And it's one thing to pray that something good will come to somebody with a pretty good life already, but it's another thing when we're praying for something during some pretty hellish, hellish conditions. All right, let's go back to the parable. We heard about an unrighteous judge who neither fears God nor regards man. Those are Luke's words. In other words, the judge does not keep the commandments and he couldn't care less for his neighbor. He doesn't love God or his neighbor. He's unrighteous. And oddly, Jesus makes him a symbol of God when God is perfectly just 
and he hears us and you can rely on him because of that. And then there's the widow. Now widows in those days were some of the most marginalized people in all of society. They were generally very poor and they frequently had no protections or protectors at all, not unlike orphans and foreigners or strangers who also had no way of protecting themselves. And you hear in the Old Testament that if the widow is being oppressed and she cries out to God, God will hear it. Now that's from the book of Exodus and it was understood to be a basic law of Judaism. In Old Testament days, you simply had to take care of those marginalized people, period. No question about it. So our judge in the parable is not following one of the most basic laws of social justice in the Old Testament. And keep in mind that our idea of social justice in the church goes all the way back to the first books of the Old Testament. So the widow goes to the judge and begs him for a righteous verdict. Now, apparently someone has accused her or is persecuting her and she's asking the judge, calling on him actually, to give her justice and to free her from the charges that have been made against her. But the judge puts her off because he doesn't really care about her being persecuted or being falsely accused. And so he neglects and ignores her. And don't forget, protecting widows and orphans and strangers was a big deal in the Old Testament. So Jesus is telling us just how unrighteous that judge really was. And the widow must have gone back to the judge many times because we hear the judge say in giving in to her demands, since this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. A quick side note. The literal Greek that, that Luke uses here is actually, lest she come and give me a black eye. That's what it says, it's a boxing term. Now, I've known some people like that before and you just simply don't wanna mess with them. But the judge fears not giving her the verdict she wants and is entitled to because she's going to give him a black eye. <laughs> so it's at this point that Jesus says to pay attention to what the dishonest judge ultimately does. Because if someone who is so unrighteous can eventually come to grant a just verdict, then how much more can we expect God, who is perfect justice himself, to grant the rights of his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Jesus promises that he will see to it that justice is done because God does care for us and he does hear us. One of the realities of our fallen world is that all too often justice is not served, it's not delivered. And it happens here and it happens everywhere. And it's no wonder that people give up on prayer and faith. Jesus asked, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? Again, remember, Jesus is talking about the end of time, the final judgment. And it seems like a long way off, yet for God, he is coming soon. And that's especially true when you think about our own personal lifespans. I'm all too aware that the older I get, the more time speeds up. And God may be here for me sooner maybe than I would like. And so it behooves me, actually it behooves all of us to keep that in mind, to not lose the faith and to pray, pray, pray continually, especially in difficult, turbulent, and maybe even evil times. Because as Jesus promises, he will be coming again for each one of us first, and then for all of us at the end times. 
We may have to wait for justice until the end of, the, end of our lives, but it will come. And so Jesus' Jesus's advice is to keep the faith, especially when you're tempted to give it up because he promises God is listening. It may take him longer than we might want, but he does love us. He is listening to us and he does promise us justice. And so he tells us to pray, pray, pray as though today is your last day because one day, someday it will be. And on that day, if you ever doubted it, you will learn forever that God was listening. And Jesus is telling us today to trust in that promise.